Hello, welcome, welcome back to Zone 5 Aviation and uh, this is just a short introduction to introduce Mark Andrews uh, of uh, the Sesco and Hemsworth Community Scale Model Club back in the UK. Uh, myself and Mark have been uh, communicating over the last few months uh, following his efforts to uh, raise uh, 5,000 UK pounds to purchase 500 scale model kits uh, for disadvantaged and sick kids for Christmas 2023. Uh, the project is Kits for Kids Project 2023 and after I made a substantial uh, contribution to the fund and to help out with, uh, with his efforts uh, Mark contacted me um, just to have a chat about myself, uh, what I do, about the channel, about um, the Facebook channel and everything else that I do, and um, just to basically put a face to the name. So um, I'll put a link in the description below um, if you, uh, if you uh, feel that you want to make a, a contribution to uh, Kits for Kids Project 2023. You can go there and contribute however much you like. Um, currently the sum is uh, just over £3,000. Uh, the initial page for, uh, for the fund was taken down, uh, hence the new page uh, is, is um, funding for, two thousand, for the remaining £2,000. So that link will be in the description and in the meantime um, I'll introduce Mark here now and he can take it away and hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye now. And good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm saying evening because in the UK today it is the 8th of September 2023, and we're getting really, really close to Christmas. And although, though, although that means you know certain things to certain people, for me this year it means something totally different. Okay, uh, I'm not just going to chat on my own tonight. Obviously, I'm, I'm not that much of a mug. Uh, I can fill time up, but not that much shuffling time. Uh, I am going to speak to a very special guest that I've asked to come on this evening. I'm saying this evening again because this guy, Andy, he is all the way down there in New Zealand. And obviously I've been on Google uh, and I've sort of like said, hey, oh, Google, what time is it in New Zealand? Uh, and she always tells me it's 11 hours in front. So I've had to schedule this broadcast, this recording, uh, for sort of 10.30, 10.40 p.m. on uh, my Friday night so that it's 9.40 a.m. on Saturday morning in New Zealand because obviously, you know, I can't do it first thing on the morning uh, because it would still be like next morning for Andy and it all sort of gets a little bit mixed up, if you will. So uh pinged Andy the other day and said, Andy, I need to talk to you, mate, because Kids for Kids Project 2023, we're getting to the back end of it now, uh, and we've got some great news coming up with uh, Luke and the guys at Black Rifle Model Works, uh, and we want to have a chat and a catch-up, really. We've never, we've never chatted like this. Uh, you know, we, we've pinged each other on Messenger like you do, which is fantastic. It's like type of message, ping, you know how it works. Uh, and before you know it, it's over there. But again, because of the time differences, it's like I will say to Andy, da da da, and there's no answer, and I'll be thinking, oh, shit in hell. And then he'll go, four hours later, so oh, I'm sorry, Mark, it's, you know, it was half past two in the morning, mate. I was still in bed. Uh, and I get that. Fair play, fair play. So, Andy from New Zealand. Uh, I am going to give him a couple of minutes of his own time as well. I'm just going to introduce him now uh, onto, the, onto the... I'm going to call it the stream, even though it's not a live stream. It is a stream. Uh, the reason, again, that we're doing a pre-record is very, very simple. Quarter to 11 at night in the UK, 
we've just had a chat about it now and i said andy do you fancy going live or do you want to do a, a pre-record i'm not for smart whatever you want the the benefits of us doing a, a live stream obviously is that people can ask questions the downside to doing a live stream at quarter to 11 at night on a Friday when you've all been in pub and you've all had a few parties, nobody's going to be there to ask any questions. So I'll bugger it. I said, yeah, sorry. And do you know what, Matt? We'll do, we'll do a pre-record uh, and then I can edit it and do one thing and then put some pictures up, etc., etc. Okay. So without further ado, because I've taken up three and a half minutes of your time already, Jesus Christ. Andy Taylor, good morning, evening, whatever time it is, from New Zealand. Hope you're well. How are you, sir? I'm very good, Mark. Thank you very much for inviting me to do this. And uh, good evening to everyone in the UK and good morning to everyone else in the lower hemisphere where we are. And uh, I'll start off whilst by saying uh, sorry to the All Blacks. We just lost. First stage, it's the first <laughs> round of the World Cup. So... It was a bad start to the morning, I'll say that. That's about oh, dear, mate. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, absolutely. Uh, personally, not a rugby fan. Uh, I, I never got into it when I were a lad. Obviously, I know that it's massive in New Zealand. Uh, I have got a mate in New Zealand, actually. Uh, I, I say a mate. It's a guy who I used to work with, you know, 10 years since, and... He just sort of said, oh, one day, yeah, I'm moving to New Zealand. Like, what? Are you kidding? And he's gone. He has gone. He's been there for, for the last 10 years. I'm not going to say who it is because uh, it's it, it, same as what the uh, – there's, there's a, an old joke, Andy, but in this country, mate, it's like from World War II as well, uh, when the GIs were over here and where we were stationed. Oh, I was stationed in Leicester. Uh, you know Jim that lived in Leicester, and it's like, yeah, no, mate, I've no. got a close. So there's no point in me talking about me, mate. Yeah. What what time is it over there? To, now it's ten to eleven at night on a Friday night. What time have you got, mate? Uh, it's uh, just a smidge on uh, ten ten to ten in the morning on Saturday morning here, and it's a beautiful. So you. Don't even. Uh, so you've already been and done your sleep time, and I'm going to go and do my sleep time. So much for the flat earthers. Uh, let's let's start with let's start with Andy. You've got the floor for a couple of minutes, right? Uh, tell me what you do because I know that you run a YouTube channel, and this is for the viewers as well. Uh, and you run a Facebook. So tell me about them too. What's what's what you got? Okay, so um, I started the YouTube channel um, under the my current display name of Tom Cadder Eleven many years ago, uh, and then as as I started getting more heavily involved into scale modelling, um, joined various model clubs and did IPMS competitions and stuff, I thought well I, I needed to create content around that because. I was just putting anything and everything up on the channel and it, it no one was interested, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, I wasn't that interested in it too. I was just putting up <laughs> to make up the numbers. Um, so so uh, it probably started around three, maybe four years ago when I decided to change the channel name and put content yeah. around the scale modeling thing. And I'd already crossed the, I began crossing that over to the Facebook page of the same name zone 5 aviation um, yeah. so I'm, probably more of my content go, content goes on uh, Facebook because of linking different uh, uh, aviation articles photographs that I've taken of various aircraft been on holiday and photographed many other aircraft so a lot of my content goes on there but whenever I want to um, do an update on a model kit i'll shoot a, a short video um and and so that's where it really started just to bring bring it all together into one place that if you know if i mention in conversation or oh, i run this page oh have you got a youtube channel have you got a facebook channel well there it is and so that, that's yeah. the cross right there so um so yeah and in New Zealand, because I'm playing the complete and utter naive card, New Zealand scale modelling. What 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 we like? Are we 
Is it busy? Is it thriving? Is it under underground? What's what's the crack? It, it's quite. It, you know, you never realise how how big or popular anything is until you're actually involved in it. Um, but the the thing about New Zealand is that um, it, it's it's very big on remembering it, it's um, it, it's wartime heritage. So uh, the uh, the old wartime aircraft, like so, you Spitfires, and you know we've got Harvard Texans, we've got um, F four U Corsairs over here. So they're very good at remembering that and the efforts that New Zealand's um, made their their contribution to the to the war effort. And so a lot of the scale modelling relates around that. So predominantly. The, the the stereotypical modeler in New Zealand will pre predominantly only build wartime aircraft. Yeah, yeah. And then then there's the few of us that more specialise in modern era stuff. And you know, particularly as, as you know, my interest is in United States Navy. Um, yeah. And so that's 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 where the rest of us fit in. Um, that doesn't mean to say that I won't build wartime aircraft. I do, and I, I enjoy it. You know, and with my um, uh, my, my volunteering with the uh, New Zealand Warbirds Association, working around those types of aircraft, it's only natural that that is going to rub off. And so, you know, I've yeah, mate. Built my fair share of P forty Warhawks and Spitfires, and I, <laughs> you know, all that kind of thing. I'm no stranger to it. Um, <laughs> But that, that's the kind of um, environment that the scale modelling in New Zealand is. And, and, you know, with my involvement with the, the scale model club, um, you know, contributed to various competitions uh, and shows around the country. And it is popular, you know, once upon a time, uh, the, there was the notion of, well, scale modelling was a, a dying hobby uh, was once upon a time yeah. before, but you know it's in the last sort of 20 years with um you know cad design and that kind of thing that the thing has blown up again um you know gone are the days when you go down your local news agent and buy a model kit for 10 10 pound or ten dollars it just doesn't yeah. happen then because because the design costs more uh, materials cost more, so it's only natural that that cost goes up. But the popularity of the hobby generally is quite good. We have still quite a number of brick and mortar scale model ho uh, hobby shops on the high street. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, so it's still a popular. The the only thing I will say is that the majority of kits that. Uh, high street stores stock are your sort of lower end type kits that are more affordable to to the yeah. lower income, right? You know, it's not every day that I can be able to afford a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar, say a seventy or eighty pound model kit, but I, yeah. I can. But majority, yeah. I'll say, no, I'm not paying that, you know. But my my thinking is that while we've got these high street model sh st shops that we can just walk in and browse hours on end um keep them going support your local um support those very much so. willing to go that extra mile to say come in come and have a look um, yeah 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 come and buy um so i'm all for supporting you know the high street stores because we don't know how long they're going to be around, you know. The world in 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 a, a crisis, financial crisis right now, post COVID era. So support yeah. them. Because they don't know how long they're going to be around, but same again. Still look for those bargains on online because they are there. But <laughs> yeah. If you can get the model kit you're looking for and pay a, a few quid more, just so you can get it, like you know, finish work, go to your local. You can get that kit in your hands that day rather than waiting several yeah, weeks for it to arrive from overseas. So that's, cool. you know, the, the modelling scene is thriving here and I'd like to think that it's thriving elsewhere in the world as well. 
Brilliant. Where does the love of the US Navy come from? Is it did you have family that served or um this potentially could be content for another video, but the bare okay. bones the bare bones of it is from um uh, my father was in the Royal Air Force, uh, Queen's right. Air Force, and I will always refer, refer to it as the Queen's Air Force, despite the Queenie being gone now. Um, yeah. But so I spent all of my my younger years growing up around aircraft, um, and but my love for U.S. Navy aviation. And it's very cliche, I know, but it comes from. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Go on, say it. Yeah, it, it comes from the movie Top Gun. Um, yes. And I'm not going. I am not going to talk about the movie. Um, no, do you know what? Right, listen, mate. That movie, right? It, it obviously when it was released. What, what year was it released? The original Top Gun. It was made in 1985 and released in 1986. And Back I in the day, in the whole world had a different perception on everything. Now, when you look at it, people describe the movie in a completely different way to how we looked at it when we were younger because I watched it and, you know, when you've got when you've got that and thrusting burners and tight turns and missiles and a hot chick, you know, and bikes and you, 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 you think I'm mental. I'll tell you, when I fly, my, mate, absolutely. I will tell we you, looked at that movie. <laughs> Go on. I, I, I tell you this. Uh, there is not a day goes by that I do not play Danger Zone on the radio. <laughs> it, I love it. As, as, uh, as cheesy and as corny as some parts of that movie are, you can't deny the soundtrack is epic. And yeah, soundtrack the, brilliant. Flying imagery in that movie is fantastic. But that let me let me what comes from. Let me fast forward you, because obviously you've seen the, I'm going to say the new Top Gun, the Maverick one. What did you think to that, mate? I thought it was fantastic. It was, yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I can talk to you when we're offline and maybe this could be another video someday, but it was from, from my experience from the first one and things that have happened since what happened when my in my younger years it was like that movie was talking to me it was yeah it, i get you it was uh it was talking right here um yeah. it had uh, and, and i will say this that the in comparison comparing the f14 tomcat to the f18 super hornet the Super Hornet does not have screen presence. It just doesn't no, have it doesn't. screen presence as, as the F-14 Tomcat. Uh, the Tomcat no. was such a big aeroplane that it just filled the screen. Um, yeah. No matter what angle you, you photograph it or film it from, it just fills any lens camera possible. The Hornet yeah. it is... Um, it's, it's been put on a on an Atkins diet, you know. It it's it just doesn't have the same presence. However, however, the oh, movie oh. The, the movie people did the best they could with it, and they did a fine job of it. I love Top Gun, mate. The original one, I absolutely love it. And when. <sighs> I know we're going off the beaten track here, mate, but when when the rumours started coming out, maybe two or three years since that, they're going to do a Top Gun 2, I sort of got that little bit of excitement and I thought, I hope this is good because there's nothing worse than when, when they do a, a number two and it's shit. And I, I went to watch it at a friend's house because he's got the big screen TV. And I absolutely loved it. 
and not only did I love it, but I brought it home on a memory stick and stuck it in my telly for my missus to watch. And again, let's let's be honest, it's masculine, it's aviation, jet fuel, tight turns, pulling G's and all that stuff. And even my missus loved it. I, we think it's we love it. We think it's brilliant, mate. I think it's one of those movies that even if you're not into aviation, if you just like a good movie that's got pace, it's got action, it's got a bit of a love scene, you know, and all that sort of thing, it's a great movie on all levels. You know, anybody can watch that and think that was a good movie. You know, that's I that's did. I must. Have... <laughs> I must, I must admit, there were, there were a couple of cheesy lines in it, uh, but I'm 30 years older now than obviously than I was when I watched the original one. And you can see, you know, you can hear the dialogue and you can see what the people who were writing this script in this movie are trying to do. A couple of cheesy lines when he's sat in the, when he's sat in the cockpit and he says, you know, talk to me, Dad. Uh, I get it. It's it's because it has to reminisce back thirty years. Uh, but I just thought, oh, that were that that were a little bit cheesy. But it did sort of fall in with the story of the film. Yeah, it, it absolutely did. And and the the there was enough uh, memories uh, and little elements in the new movie that connected it all together if you hadn't you could still watch the new movie on its own but it helps if you've seen the first movie because it 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 links it so much together um but it's got all the new stuff in it you know for the new generation yes. and, I, and i think that's I'm, most I'm of the it's, it's a new movie for a new generation but just enough in it for the for the previous generation to think yeah this is it. This is, and and as soon as those credits roll, as soon as the credit title rolled with that music, I thought I'm back. I'm absolutely going to blow your mind with this one. So obviously, uh, I think the the movies in this day and age that have franchised things to death, Star Wars, Fast and Furious, things like that. You think of Top Gun now. Right, so we've got the original Top Gun movie and we've got Top Gun 2 Maverick. What I would personally like to see is the prequel to Top Gun where his dad gets shot down in an F4 yeah. and and take the movie that way and let's see what, what that were all about and that leads up to the original Top Gun movie. I digress. Definitely. I agree. I agree. Definitely. Absolutely. Right. Reason that I've asked you to come on, obviously, uh, chat about yourself, chat about us. Uh, you can see across the bottom of my screen there, I've got uh, a little caption that's going across that says Kits for Kids Project 2023. Reason I've asked Andy to come on to this uh, stream is because Andy uh, took note of the project that we started in January. Uh, and got hold of me and said, how's it going, Mark? And I said, well, we're up and running. I think we've got 10 quid in. Uh, and Andy threw a fuel bob in, and I'm not going to disclose what it is. Uh, I did ask him off camera if he if he minded. And and Andy gave the same answer as to what I would give if it were the way around. Uh, what I will say is Andy didn't just give us a step up towards our five grand target Andy gave us an incredibly enormous step up to our five grand target target at the moment is still 5k which is a lot of money in the UK Andy uh, well it's a lot of money anyway mate uh, and we are currently sat at a shade over £3,000 so on the 29th of September this year, uh, myself, Black Rifle Model Works, Luke, Stuart and the guys, uh, they're going to do a live charity auction on their Black Rifle Model Works YouTube channel on a live stream. It's on a Friday night. And what we're going to try and do, mate, is raise the last two grand 
to meet this target. Question is for you. You are how far, how many miles is New Zealand to the, to the UK? How many miles do we know? Uh, it's somewhere around... Actually, I have no idea. It, it's it's uh, several hundred thousand miles. It's, it's a long way. It's a long, it's way. A long way. Question it's is... Question is, how does a guy in New Zealand who's watched one or two of my videos made a video on me about tornadoes and I actually had a friend of mine say, Matt, you'll never guess what, you need to watch this channel. How does a guy all that way away that barely knows me, watched a few of my videos, chip in to a project that I've set up with Luke and the guys at Black Rifle, so many thousands of miles away. Why does a bloke do that? I am completely intrigued. Uh, for the simple reason that um, I, I I believe in a project like this because I the obviously the a uh, the beneficiaries that are going to be a, of of this this fundraiser. Uh, kids that probably feel like they're they're on the knees. Um, yeah, I've, I've been there, um, and whenever I was very young, I was in hospital. I was in those kids' situation, and I know yeah. what it's like. Whenever you feel like perhaps you're the only one in the world, and you're in it, you're stuck in a situation that. You can't do anything about, but others others are trying to help you out. But you still okay. need that, that spark or some just something to lift you up. Um, and I'll start from the beginning. That the only the, the only reason I came across yourself was because I'm you know I like tornadoes. I grew up around tornadoes, and I just. I was searching for a particular video about building a revolt tornado, which I know you've built many, and that was how I yeah. came across your channel. And right. The more, the more I, the more I was watching, you know, I thought I like this guy. This this guy's onto something, and the work that you do with your your club, uh, I think, is amazing. And I wish more clubs would do the same with what you you guys do. Um, you know, you're very you're very active in supporting your local charities, uh, keeping yeah. your members active in doing different activities. Which I just think yeah. that they, you uh, you and your club should be the role model for every other club, no matter how many members it has, no matter what they do. Your club should be the role model because you're always doing something. You're always looking after those who are in need. Now. I would say that not not very often that I'm very charitable, but when it's something that I truly believe in, either through personal experience or someone I connect with, in whatever it is, that's when I think this this needs help. This needs recognition, and so the relating to to the whole um, kits for kids project. Um, we discussed it before we recorded this, uh, that my my very first exposure to a model kit was when I was in hospital. And, and the guy in the next bed bay from me, he pulls out an Airfix 172nd scale Avro Vulcan. And I'm like, that's epic. That's brilliant. <laughs> I, I yeah. don't ever think I actually saw the guy build it. He may, he, he may have, you know, I may have seen it through the through the window at some point, but I just thought that's cool. Um, that's cool. That is very cool. Uh, and you know, obviously, that led to me getting involved in it later on. But being in that situation. Uh, of feeling helpless and that kid having that model kit in his hand must have been like he'd won the lottery who gave it to him absolutely i don't know but just 
something as small as that, which I think is, is the the basis of of this uh, project. Uh, yeah. I think that can help many more kids put a smile on the face, even just for five or ten minutes. If that's what it does, yeah. if that's what it takes, then that's why I contributed what I did because this needs to happen. It's a phenomenal contribution. Tell me, you were in hospital, you saw that, right? Mine, and I've told this on my Spotlight Start, mine, I was a young lad playing football in the school playground. And the headmaster's office window was there. And being the cheeky young scamp that all young lads are age, you know, seven, six, six seven, and we always used to give each other a little coggy up to, to have a look through headmaster's window. And my headmaster back in the day, uh, he got a what I now know, uh, what a 1 in 48 A10 warthog in his window, uh, fully muscled up. And, you know, you can look back and it's a question I'll say to you, and it's a question that I do ask on Spotlight Star. What what was the pinnacle moment that you thought, holy shit, look at that? And and you know what, Andy, you might not be able to answer. There's just something inside a young boy, a young girl, whatever, and it just absolutely instantly connects that person to what they are seeing. Yeah, and you're drawn in. Well, you know, for me, it wasn't. The scale model, but that that was certainly an element as to why I got involved in scale modeling. Um, the 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 scale modeling for, for me, or the the spark was certainly seeing that model, and I thought if I if he can build that, then I can. Um, and then several years later, whenever I did get out of the hospital, uh, my father built my very very first model uh for me and that's when i really knew that this is uh, i had to get involved in this and i actually still have that model today and it was it's a really what is it tell me what it is mate i think it i'm not sure exactly what scale is i think it's like a one four hundred scale something but it, it's a uh, an xb70 valkyrie wow so, it was an experimental aircraft back in the 60s, and there was only ever two made. One crashed, and one's in the museum, um, museum at Dayton, Ohio. Is that Dayton, the one with the? Is that the one with the Delta wing and the really long neck? Yeah, it was. A, it was designed. Can on, on the front. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it was designed yeah. as a Max three su uh, supersonic uh, strategic bomber. Um, yes. Only two were ever built. One crashed, um, and one one's in in the museum, uh, the um, United States Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. And, All um, right. Yeah, so that they still um, it's it's in uh, you know a very well um, air controlled museum, and occasionally they do roll it out whenever they're shuffling airplanes around. And uh, really, it's on my bucket list that one day I want to go and see it. Because I was just going to say that. There's back in the day when aircraft were they were experimenting with such high speed aircraft, and that's when the likes yeah. of the F seventy one Blackbird came along. Um, because Love a lot, it. Of, all of, a lot of that supersonic research was done with the XB XB seventy, and a lot of it went into the um, or a lot of that design um, and modeling was actually went into the Concorde as well. Um, so the Americans provided some of that research um, for the Concorde as well, um, but uh, that that seeing that um, that model and then obviously I watched programs about it. Yeah, that I thought I want to build aircraft like that. That's that's beyond cool, you know. So um, did you uh, did you do it when you? How old were you then when you picked it up as a hobby? Um. It was probably whenever I was around, was probably seven, around seven, eight or nine. So I was in junior school. 
Um, and the very the very first model that I built that I that I can remember that I built myself, um, and it is very stereotypical of me. And it was an F fourteen Tomcat. I built the thing yeah. straight out of the box. I didn't even paint it. I just built it, put all the weapons and everything, and I put it on top of my TV. Uh, a couple of days later, I came home and found it in pieces. So <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> but what that's happened? Another story. Um, so I think so, I think my mum had been cleaning my room or something. And she accidentally knocked it, and yeah, but hey, yeah, worst things happen at sea. <laughs> <coughs> but on my spot, on my spotlight. <laughs> On my spotlight star, I get asked the same question, and one of the first models that I got was a one in thirty-two Tomcat, and I did exactly the same. Airbrush, what's that? Painting, what's that? I think I painted it with literally emulsion, Andy, and uh, did try and put the decals on as far as I can remember. Took it to school for a show and tell, uh, and the school bully uh, took it off me and went, "Let's see if it flies." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smashed it into a million bits. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure as a, as a young boy, I was absolutely devastated because obviously I'm 52 now. So I've carried that memory with me for all my life, uh, mm. which means it must be poignant. Uh, but yeah, I was absolutely devastated. But at the same time, I also knew that I loved the hobby. Dropped out of it when I was 14. Did you stay with it throughout the teens and the 20s and what have you, or did you drop off? Um, I I dropped off um, probably uh, pro probably in my mid mid high school years. Um, you know, yeah. study gets more comprehensive, and then. Rolled, rolled into college and uh, my apprenticeship and my early, early career days. Um, but I probably picked it up again. I was probably, I think it was about halfway through my apprenticeship in around 2007 or eight, there, thereabouts. So it was quite a long gap, you know. Um, yeah. Probably the, the last models that I built before um, leaving high school, I built a couple of 172nd scale um, Sea Kings, um, the, the yeah. Airfix uh, and Ravel Sea Kings. Um, and those were probably the last models that I built before, you know, leaving the roost and, you know, going off on my own, you know. And then, uh, yes, I picked it up again. Uh, about 07, 08, um, built a, a couple of things. And then it wasn't until I, I moved over to New Zealand in 09 when I, I thought I need to pick this up again. And, you know, um, I bought a, a Ravel 48 scale F15E with the, the tiger markings on it. I built yeah. that up. Um, built an Airfix 148 scale. That's when I started getting into 48 scale, so I'm going big here, you know, going from 72nd yeah. to 48. Um, built an Airfix 48 scale Buccaneer. And then that's when I, that, it was round about that time when um, I I thought, well, I want to get it, I want to get into a club environment. I want to be around more like minded people with this and, you know, improve, improve the craft of, you know, because I thought well, if I'm no doubt if I get into a club environment, there's going to be people there that are more experienced, and I can start really developing my skill. You know, rather than just slapping paint on it. You know, I, the the image yeah, I yeah. had was the 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 typical IPMS image. You know, I just wanted uh, to yeah. build, get to that point of being able to build just a perfect model. Um, yeah. and obviously into the airbrush thing as well. So I did that, got in touch with my local hobby club. By that time, it was around, I think about 2011. So I'd been here about 18 months, you know, got settled, worked, that sort of thing. 
tell you what, moving to another country is a <laughs> is a big effort. Um, yeah. So it takes a while to find your bearings, get get to know people, you know, house and work and that sort of thing. So once that yeah. was established, then I, that's when I start got in touch with the model club, and then um, started developing techniques. Bought my yeah. first airbrush yeah. through, you know, with the knowledge that those guys were passing on, you know. And it, it's surprising how quickly, you know, if if you're really in tune with it, uh, and yeah. you you want to absorb all this knowledge it's very difficult for uh, it was very easy and quickly you can go from say this level to this level and then yeah. and beyond you know you can yeah. go up up levels very very quickly just by listening to people um going you know going to the um the, the model shows that we used to partake in and um that yeah it was surprising how quick that that developed and you know, you, you never stop, as with anything, you should never stop learning. There should always, you know, no matter, with every model that I build, and I'm sure you're the same, uh, you should always try and learn something new or try something new. And if it doesn't work yeah. out, you try something else. And it's an ever-evolving process. Um, and and that's that's kind of where it started. And so very, very quickly I established myself uh with the model club as um part of the core group of people you know we we only had probably on a good day probably eight or nine members show up um yeah. on the books probably only about 21 22 members on the book so it was a very small club yeah. you know by comparison um but i very quickly established myself as being core a part of the core group of modelers that were on their game you know yeah uh, and so whenever it came time you know the the chairman of the club he said look why didn't you enter in, into competition and i said well you know i'm not you know you know as i keep saying you know i'm not all about me you know the, the that's just how i am you know um yeah and so i said i'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not that that guy, you know. I'm, um, as much as I like to try and get a perfect model, I'm not worried if I miss this detail or that detail. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, what have I got to lose, you know? And so I entered into competition a few times. Um, I didn't, I didn't win anything, but I placed within the top five, you know, uh, on average, within at least within the top ten. Um, yeah. Uh, but I very quickly um, fell out of love with it because you're always in a cycle. Whenever you, you go to shows, and I'm sure you're experienced in this, but you, yeah. you're always fighting yourself because you're always fighting, oh, I've got to get this model done by this date because we've got this show or I've got this yeah. club. And then you go to the show and you spend the next week or two fixing all your models that you've that have broken because it transported them. And try as you try as you might, as you know, try as you might to never works. It never works. You always lose the odd pedo probe, a missile here and there, landing gear. Yeah. And so I very quickly fell out of love with it because I thought if this is what I've got to do every time I go to a show, I don't want a bar of it, you know. Um no. but I had to give a bar of it because um within three years i was i was with the club probably for about seven years but after three years i became the secretary for the club um and so i was put in a position of organizing all the shows that we went to liaison with the show organizers um yeah. setting up with that and other um you know paperwork and all that kind of thing you know so i was put in this position so i did have to give her stuff you know so uh um i was kind of stuck with it for a while yeah um but um i i, I thoroughly enjoyed my time doing that um yeah but now you know I'm, i don't have much to do with the club anymore because 
you know, whenever I last, last, last excuse me, whenever I left my previous job, uh, the job that I currently do now got more intense. And so I didn't have the time anymore, um, particularly to do the secretary stuff. Um, I yeah. handed over with the secretary role um, and then stayed with the club off and on for a while. And then uh, I just didn't have the time for it anymore. And, and I just, just moved, you know, just a move, just moved on. That, that was simple. simple yeah, yeah. Like, was you know and um concentrating on my career a bit more um trying to up a bit. and um so now i just kind of model for myself but i have a core group of friends that we and yourself um and the, the youtube and facebook page just that's where i focus my energy now um just models cool. and when when i want you know just moving back then to so Seeing that in hospital, that's ignited the fire in your belly to say, I definitely want to support my Kids for Kids Project 2023. One of the aims that we've got from this, it's it's almost like a double-edged thing, Andy. So on the one hand, yeah, we want to give 500 kits to kids this Christmas so we're going to get bugger all or next to nothing. We are donating to uh, hospitals and centres for underprivileged kids. The hospitals, we can't decide on whether that the child that receives a gift is underprivileged. It, they might not be, but mm. we're not going to discriminate because the parents are poor or wealthy or well-to-do, whatever. We're not, we're not fussed about that. This is where the other side comes in. The other side is is from, and, and you've told that poignant story there, in that we are hoping that out of 500 kits that we are, fingers crossed, going to be able to get this year, as a percentage, you say, out of 500 kits, how many of those kids do we think, do you think, are going to, look at it and go, yeah, 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 next, not for me. We want 1%, 5%, I know 10% is a big number, but 10% of those kids to feel exactly like how you felt and exactly how I felt when I saw that A10, when you saw what you saw and you go, I need to do that. And that's where we're hoping that next generation of builders comes from. Do you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Uh, and and it's things like this that that need to keep the hobby going. And you know, you, you can't you can't force things on on people, but you just hope that there is a small percentage that will say, "Well, yeah, I, I quite enjoy doing this." Um, yes, there'll be the kids that might build it and not. not give a thought about it afterwards and that's fine that's fine you know yeah absolutely tests. fine um but but yeah it, it's it, it'd be nice to think that the next generation will carry the hobby on because you know it is a great hobby you know it it it, it is. takes you into a different place from the the rest of the busyness of, of life you know um but it's going to do some good. There's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I can't put a number on it, but the, there will be someone out there that will pick that. You know, the day that they give them, get given one of those those kits, yeah. no matter what it is, they'll, they'll run with it. I'm sure they will. There has to be. There has to be. Absolutely. We are aiming to do uh, 500... Uh, Airfix, Airfix starter kits. We're coming up to the back end of the program, the project, uh, very, very soon. Uh, I think uh, the the chat room that we've got, the Kits for Kids Project 23 chat room, there's me on it, Luke on it, and the, the other ambassadors, Clive, uh, Fred, Luke, Stuart, uh, Ange, who's looking after the number side, so we've all picked uh, a specific place where we're going to get those kits 
uh, sent or, uh, or to our houses and then we're going to go and distribute them. Uh, but we're, we're, we're looking all good. And like I said, mate, it's just, it's just that final push. The, the charity auction Friday the 29th of September on Black Rifle Model Works YouTube channel starts at 8pm. Uh, there is a list up at the moment. They've got 69 kits that they've had donated. Uh, there's, there's, there's a list of all those 69 uh, and we're just hoping. You, you'll think of this. You'll do the math. You'll say, right, well, you're £2,000 short. Uh, 60 quid, uh, sorry, six, 69 kits. So if each kit sold for £10, we'd make 690. Double that for 20 quid, you'd make 1,300 quid. And then uh, another 690, that'd make it £30 a kit. That's all we need. If all those bits and bats sell for an average of 30 quid, we will do the two grand. As yeah. soon as we've done that £2,000, as soon as we hit that target, mate, we are back in touch with Airfix. We're saying, this is the money that we've got. How do you want me to send it to you? And when can I have my kids? Because I've got kids that I need to look after yeah. in one respect for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that Airfix, you know, I do know that, um, you know, from involvement with the club, we used to do a Kids for Kids thing at the, the shows we used to attend where we would get a batch of kids uh, kits and the kids could you know for a gold coin donation could sit down and build a kit for a morning um yeah and so i'm sure that they're aware and if they're not they should be that this hopefully project, this project is underway and i should jolly well hope that come the day you come knocking with your money that they have kits on hand to dish out to you guys. And if they don't, they need to be. Yeah, don't worry, mate. Uh, myself and the team, uh, I know that uh, the chap called Stuart and Luke, uh, I know that, uh, I, I must say, do you know what? Uh, they're doing an absolutely phenomenal job and uh, we've been recording for 50 minutes. I'm going to take one minute out of the time. Uh, because I need to pass on my absolute debt of gratitude to Luke, Stuart, uh, and everybody else who has helped in whatever shape or form. Uh, Clive Brewer uh, in London, Fred Foote in uh, Scotland, Ange Little in Humberside, Luke and Stuart in the Midlands area. And do you know what? When I first contacted Luke and said, I've had an idea, mate. Can I run it past you? Yeah, of course you can. Run it past him. And I said, what do you think to that? Do you love it? Uh, and he went, no, mate, I don't. Uh, I said, no, sorry. I'll. I said, do you like it? He went, no, I don't like it. And I thought, oh, shit. Yeah. I, right, okay. He went, I don't like it. I love it. Yeah. And this is where the, the minute of gratitude comes because without and it does take some time and effort, without Luke and the lads who've absolutely run, literally run the project from their houses, I certainly wouldn't have been able to do this on my own. I wouldn't have had the exposure that those lads have given this project. I wouldn't have had the connections or the field of view in viewers and Facebook people looking in the same as what those guys have got. I needed a pretty big hitter, if you will, that could stand by me and say, I'll tell you what, Mark, we love this. Count us in. And I, I have, they've been absolutely phenomenal in the help that they've given. And it's, I've needed it. Yeah. It's coming to crunch time now where we're having to say, right, okay, let's let's get this thing wrapped up for this year. Uh, but without those, Andy, I don't know if you've... Fo Do you follow the Black Rifle uh, YouTube channel there? Um, I'll, I'll be honest, no, I don't, because I, I just haven't gotten on to it yet. Um, but, you know, the, the only uh, exposure to have had is through yourself, 
through mentioning it, but I've got no doubt that those guys are doing everything that they can to help you out and help. help Absolutely, so. Um, you know, my, my parents have got experience in in running uh, charity events um, whenever we lived in the UK, and it doesn't. You can't. You can't do it on one or even two people. It needs a team of people. No. And you've clearly got the right people in place to do the, that. The brilliant, mate. So, in in that kind of vein, I'm going to throw it back to you. Go on. Where did where did the where did the idea for this start for you? When did the light bulb come come on to say that that we need to do this? For kids, for kids. Correct. It's dead easy, mate. Absolutely dead easy. Uh, and I do love telling the story. So, so last October, November, uh, my commute to work is... Uh, you guys deal in kilometres, don't you? Correct. So, 30 kilometres, right? Uh, well, 20 miles. miles as well, having lived in the UK. 20 miles. So 20 miles, and on the journey to work, I, I'm listening to the radio, and we have a radio station over here called Heart FM, mm -hmm. and the uh, the presenters on there, two great characters, one's called uh, Jamie Theakston, uh, and the other mm -hmm. lady, the lady, she's called Amanda Holden, and all through October and November, it's song, song, competition, advertisement, advertisement, and then the saying, look, uh, there's, there's loads and loads of underprivileged kids this year that aren't going to get any toys. When you go Christmas shopping for your own children, if you wouldn't mind, because you know you've lived in the UK, we're very polite, so if you wouldn't mind, uh, would, you, would you possibly consider buying a, another present uh, and donating it to us so that we can give these uh, toys out to the uh, to, to the local charities and the kids' hospitals and one thing or another. And I was driving to work, and every single day, mate, October, November, right into December, and it, it it's almost like a subliminal message, Andy. It's bombarding you all the time. Uh, and I was driving to work one day, and I thought, Do you know what, I ought to I ought to buy a kit. I had to buy a little kit and send it to Art FM. I'm sure that they've got some regional places where you can drop it off and da da da. And I was driving a little bit further and I thought, Do you know what? I'm not meant of money, but they're not they're not expensive, these airfix kits, mate. I wonder if I ought to buy ten. Because out of ten, I might get one of the kids that goes, I'm better now, I'm out of hospital, I've had my tonsils out. I've had my collarbone fixed or whatever. Uh, Mum, is there any chance for Christmas I can have? Uh, I, I like building that model. Can I have some more? Can I have some more, please, sir? And then throughout my working day, and I've got to concentrate so much at work, Andy, it's untrue, uh, and, and I'm trying to concentrate on work. But constantly, mate, in me, I've got go, go shopping, buy a toy for a kid and I'm thinking I wonder if I can instead of buying 10 kits I wonder if I can get my club Sesco and Emsworth Community Scale Model Club to chip in and we can buy 100 kits and I'm not kidding mate by the time I got home you, you know it had turned into 500 kits I, I chose Luke who I wanted to speak to I rang him that night I said I'm literally bursting at the seams. I've got an idea that I need you to, to listen to me. And it, it all took off from there. I'm the same as you, mate. Listen, I'm a loud guy, right? Everybody knows it. But I don't want fame and fortune. I don't want a medal. I don't want Jack. I don't want nothing. I'm, I do not care. What I care about is that I were in hospital when I was 14 my mum and dad brought me uh, a little battleship in to build and I absolutely loved it because back in the day, when you had your tonsils out, you were in for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Now you're in for two hours and the, the scooting you're off. But yeah. it weren't... Absolutely. Conveyable. It weren't, it, weren't the it weren't the fact that 
I didn't feel love because I, I have, I've had that all my life off my parents. It well, they, they got me something that one knew. I built it. I glued it together. Probably glued my fingers together more than all else, like you do when you're that age. Yeah. But I want to be able to give children the same opportunity, the same adventure that I had when I was young in hospital. The, the, we're doing it for kids in underprivileged, underprivileged kids in centres as well, and it's just to put a smile. That's that's the goal, Andy. Put a smile yeah. on a kid's face on December twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I agree. How's that? That's what it. That's what exactly what it's about. Um, you know, the, it's not. It's not nice when you you're down on a low. And no. yeah, you just, you just, yeah, it, it doesn't matter what, what it is. It could, could be a model kit, be something as simple as giving someone a kid an ice cream, anything just to pat them up, you know, yeah. as, as they did with me, um, just something just to put a smile, just to lift the, the spirit. That's um, it, mate. Yeah. And it, That's it's it. Just, and obviously, and obviously we're hoping on the other side, like I said, that one percent, five percent, ten percent go home after their stay in hospital, recuperate to full health, live happy and fulfilling long lives, but do a bit of modelling as well. We're, we're hoping that that happens. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Too do you know right. what I mean? No, I, I I'm yeah. sure. We, I, I'm sure, Andy, that with the kits that we get, because Airfix starter kits, mate, I think there's tanks, there's uh, cars, there's Spitfires, there's a helicopter. It's the ones that don't need glue. And we can't tell the doctors and nurses who to give the kits to. We can't say, make sure that you'll give all the little boys tanks yeah. and Spitfires and you give all the little girls a car and a tractor. We can't say that, but we're hoping that they use a little bit of common and happens, you know, take them round on a trolley and say, do you want to pick one of these to make? Because it's that simple. Yeah. With, and, uh, with know, mum and dad. Uh, I don't know um, what hospitals are like today, you know, particularly in the UK. It's been a long time since I've, I've been out of that environment. Um, but certainly, when I, the days when I was in hospital, every ward tended to have a, a common area, and they called, you know, generally a play area for kids. And they would always set something up. So whether they do something yeah. like that, or give it to give it to the kids individually, that that's fine either way. But I think <coughs> I do I do agree that it's a good idea not to be introducing the the, the paints and the glue because you know for no, kids, don't need it. Not a good idea to introduce chemicals like that, even as water based yeah. as they might be. But you know, it's a good idea to go with the quick build uh, edition of the kits, and um, I really, really hope that it works. Yeah, uh, mate, we we chat anyway on Messenger, uh, probably not as often as we should, but uh, you're very much involved in it, mate, and uh, your, your contribution's been absolutely. Unbelievable, absolutely outstanding. Uh, mm -hmm. so watch the space Friday 29th. I know I keep saying it Friday 29th September 8 pm UK time. Watch for the auction. I'm hoping that come the end of the night, I know what we've got in the bank. Uh, we'll keep a tally on what is uh, what we achieve on the night, and trust me, and you know that I'll be having one eye on that money value going up and up yeah. and up and uh i've got the old party poppers ready because I, I really want to do it and, and be that five thousand pound on the night it would mean do you know do you know what it's like the kids who are, are going to benefit from this it's like the my kids i don't even know them. there's there's kids there's kids that have been that are going to go to school on monday or they're going to go and play out tomorrow or in October, November, they're going to be hit with some kind of illness, disease, broken bone, tonsillitis, 
cut hand bonfire night like you know that they're gonna spend some kids out there are gonna spend some time in hospital this christmas and they don't even know it too many sweets on halloween night yeah mate yeah <laughs> and i just wanna with with the team with the team the people all over the country who are helping us do this i just want to be able to say merry christmas it's not end of world you're going to get better build this it'll make you feel like absolutely fantastic <laughs> that's right that's, it's, that's like, it's like the my own kids kids for kids project 2023 parked what are you building now what are you doing tell me uh, at the moment, I've got a project going. Uh, I'm building two uh, two models actually for a project: a 148 scale Tomcat, no surprise, uh, and a 48 yep. scale uh, EA18G Growler. The reason why I'm doing Ooh. those is because this year marks the uh, 30th anniversary. I think it's, this, it's either this year. I, I think I'm it maybe a year out, but it's either this year or next year. But we're close enough anyway. But um, this yeah. year marks the 30th anniversary since the disbandment of the very first Tomcat Squadron, which was activated All in right. 19, 1972, 73, uh, which Bloody was VF1, VF1 Wolfpack. They were the first Tomcat yeah. Squadron. Um, so, so this year marks 30, 30 years since, the, since that squadron was disbanded. So I'm doing. Is that the one with the? Is that the one with the red tail, white stripe, white wolf face? Yes. Yep, that's the one. Yep. Uh, so I'm doing. I'm doing the Tomcat in wow. the original um, high vis, you know, uh, gloss VF1 uh, red scheme, and I'm doing a sort of uh, what if scheme because. You know, as I say, uh, VF, VF1 didn't continue um, post 1992, 93. Uh, it was VF1 was gone, uh, and so the my, my my thinking around it is that VF1 Wolfpack, we've got the EA18G Growler. I'm thinking Wolf Growl, so I'm doing an EA18G in the original. Tomcat scheme to sounds good to me, uh, mate. Acknowledge the anniversary. So, so not wrong with that. Sounds good to me. That's what's on my table at the moment, um, and I've probably picked pick the worst kits to do it as well because I'm I'm using the <laughs> Iceberry kits and they're they're not the best. But hey, <laughs> I have actually done that. Let me just have a look. <coughs> I have done the Italiari 148 Tomcat. Yeah. What, <coughs> what did I do with that? It's not over it. It's not in my cabinets, which means over the seven years that I've been doing this hobby, it's probably found its way to the trash uh, because it weren't as good as the stuff that I'm doing. Do you know what? I do need a one in thirty-two tom. Have you done a one in thirty? Yeah, I've built it. Uh, yeah. Have you done a one in thirty-two tom cat? Um, I have one. I, in fact, yes, I have. I've um, I've got one that's currently in pieces, which someone gave to me in 1994. So I'm doing a reconditioning on it, but I have had that's a nearly thirty years since. I know it's a long time, um, but I have built I have built um, the Ravel one, and I do have a Tamiya one in the stash as well. I do fancy it, you know. Yeah, give it a go. I do. I do fancy it. The problem is, is I'm a tornado lover, Don't we as you it? know. <laughs> I am Do you know what I've got to I'm, while I while I was driving home tonight? I know yeah. you are. While I was driving home tonight, I thought I wonder if Andy's going to ask me any questions. And Andy's going to say to me, one of the questions Andy's going to ask me is, "Mark, why do you love tornadoes?" Why do you love tornadoes? Do you know what it is? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. I'll tell you what it is. 
it's it's a uh, it's a combination of things, right? Because I've got my cabinets over here. Number one, it's not over long as a as an aircraft. It's it's more squat. Number yeah. two, it's it looks like it's if it were a person, it it it's not obese. But it's it looks a little bit chunky, looks a little bit overweight. Number three, uh, twin engine because it needs to shift like fast, yeah. Uh, and it needs those twin engines to get it going. Uh, number four, the sweet wing is just absolutely incredible. Number five is the size of the goddamn tail. Because it's just absolutely when you look at it, and I'm sure you know when you start there and you go like that, and you and you you absolutely. But the last one, the last one why I love it, and this is the absolutely the main main reason, is because of the the schemes on it, Andy. I've yeah. got I I've built twenty five of these birds, right. And every single one's a different scheme. I mean, for Christ's sake. Do you know that, what I mean? That is one of the interesting things about the tornado, that un unlike um, particularly U.S. Navy aircraft, that have all, always traditionally been, you know, probably uh, since since the late 70s, have all gone with that, that grey drab scheme. As far as I can yeah. remember... Um, in fact, most of, most of the Cold War era RAF aircraft have been in a lot of very attractive schemes, and particularly the yeah. tornado. You say, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I lived in Scotland at the time when um, when Gulf War One uh, started up, and I remember the, those tornadoes coming back into Lossiemouth in the the desert sand scheme. And then, you know, consequently in, in the um, the grey and green camouflage and then other schemes and that. Um, but the, the one that sticks in my mind, I, I don't know if you've built it, is the winter, the winter camo. You have built it. I see, I see. That is the one that sticks, <coughs> that is the one that sticks in my mind the most. Hey, oh, I'm, uh, I'm just off the other side of my shed. Uh, and I am going to get the bird out. I don't need... What do I need? Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me just put these couple of bits to one side and pop her down there and take a seat. And then I will lift her up for you. And... There you go. Oh, you beauty. And it's in the squadron that I was thinking of, too. There's two AC squadron. That's stunning. How was that? I am very jealous. Not. How was that? That's very cool. Uh, buckets. I've got uh, one closed, one open. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, which is something that you can do on this kit. Uh, it's extremely difficult to do. Uh, unbelievably difficult, along with the uh, drooped flaps as well. Extremely difficult to do. Yeah. But there she is. Yeah, that is exactly the scheme that sticks in my mind. Very good. Cool. There you go. I've answered your, que I've answered your question, mate. Good man, good man, yeah. <laughs> cool beans. Right, let's wrap it up. One minute, 11 seconds. Uh, one minute, 11 minutes. Listen, uh, it's been absolutely delightful to be able to talk to you all the way down there. I have now got uh, a couple of minutes to midnight, which means that you've got, I'm looking at my clock, you've got a couple of minutes to 11 a.m. on Saturday morning. Am I right? On the dot. On the dot. Andy, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. A real blast listening to you uh, and, and talking with you as well. Uh, and uh, thank you for sharing all your little experiences. It won't be the last time 
that we chat. I'm absolutely sure. Uh, okay. Once, what? Uh, once we get chatting, once I get this live stream thing really, really kicked off, mate, uh, it'd be an honour to have you back on and chat with uh, another four four people that we've got on. That would be great. Uh, I, yeah, absolutely, mate. I can't thank you enough. Uh, for doing what you've done for Kids for Kids Project uh, 2023. Uh, we will obviously stay in touch. Uh, I will follow this story through with you right to the very end uh, because I know that you've uh, you've contributed massively and I know that it's something that you believe in through us that we're going to deliver. So yeah. absolutely fantastic, mate. Has it been all right chatting with me tonight? It's been fantastic, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just finish saying by, you know, I've said it before. It's, it's a fantastic effort to to go ahead with this, and to get everyone else on board with it. Um, you know, I, there's not enough that can be said uh, to to quantify this, but it, it's it's just fantastic what you're doing. Um, Thank you. So you know. Everyone out there that, that sees this video, get out there, get you know, keep rolling the money in if you if you can contribute anything. But do remember, we have still got the Just Giving page going. Absolutely, yeah. if you search on if you search on uh, Just Giving Kits for Kids Project Twenty Three, the page is there. Yeah. Absolutely. So so contribute if you can, if you can. September 29th, Watch watch that auction, and if you can bid on it, just. Every, anything we can do to get get to the goal end for this and um, get Mark and his team to have a very happy day. Brilliant, mate. Absolutely spot on. Right, uh, let me just have a look here because it does get a little bit technical. First thing I'm going to do is put myself that way uh, and make myself small, as it were, yeah. uh, and then I'm going to you, – you stay on – you stay there because I've got to press end recording, which will end the recording. Uh, but me and you, me and you stay on. So listen, uh, I, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Uh, next live stream is next Saturday. Uh, today is Friday. I will probably edit this tomorrow and publish it on Saturday, which is Sunday for Andy. Uh, Andy, feel free to share it. Uh, in fact, I'll send the link to you and then you can link that to your YouTube, I don't believe, mate. Okay, yeah, I'll put it up. Uh, uh, and, and we'll get that sorted out one way or another, I'm sure, with technology. So I'm going to end the recording. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching. It's really, really appreciated. If you've stuck with us through all this time, uh, if you're new to Kits for Kids, I hope that you've learned something. Uh, and if you have if you know all about it, like Andy says, please make sure that you watch on uh, Friday, the 29th of September for the auction. If there's something there that takes your fancy, uh, dip in. All the money is going to help us buy kits for kids. That's the name of the bloody project. Okay, uh, Andy, uh, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye, and uh, thanks very much Thank for you. this opportunity, Mark. And, uh, you know, let's let's get this on its way. No problem. You'll stay right there. I'm going to end the recording.